To most of us, science can be a bit of an abstract concept. Sure, we're surrounded by the products of science. We refrigerate food, take medicine, use GPS, but the actual process of science is something far more distant. The domain of anonymous technicians in sealed off labs, making impressive sounding discoveries and breakthroughs which have limited impact on our day-to-day -day existence. But what if the workings of science can happen much closer than that? In your town, on your street, in your home? No, I'm not talking about an invasion of people in white coats or hazmat suits, but instead the idea that science is something anyone can do. Make no mistake, scientific research is a complex, convoluted business, but central to it are two crucial steps, gathering data and analyzing it. Now, when that requires smashing subatomic particles together or synthesizing unstable chemical compounds, it probably is better left to the professionals. But some kinds of data exist on a more human scale. And in those cases, it can make sense to outsource the job to the general public. In the past, this process, known as citizen science, has been as simple as people writing down observations about bird sightings or weather patterns and mailing them off for scientists to analyze. But in the 21st century, the idea has been given a technological upgrade, resulting in a new type of collaborative research, crowdsourced science. The key to understanding how this works is to realize that you already have access to incredibly advanced scientific equipment. You're using it to watch this video. The array of features built into our devices make them perfect for data gathering and analysis. All that's required is to use them in the right way. Take photography. Scientists need visual data about everything from changing coastlines to light pollution. Download an app, take a snap, and a hey, presto, you've gathered scientific data. Some projects rely on sound, like apps for recording animal calls, helping monitor endangered species. Even gaming can count as science, with specially designed puzzle games making data analysis fun. While helping to map neurons, train AI models, design better cancer treatments, and more. Initiatives like these are great for scaling up scientific efforts, reaching more people, gathering more data, and sharing the work of wading through it all. But beyond just analyzing more data, crowdsourcing also creates ways to analyze it better. Take websites like Kaggle or Wazoku Crowd. These online hubs allow organizations as big as NASA, CERN, and AstraZeneca to turn their scientific problems into public competitions, offering prize money up to tens of thousands of dollars for viable solutions. Projects like these show that the strength of crowdsourcing goes beyond mere scale. By pulling the online community's brain power, a crowd can sometimes find solutions where experts drew a blank. Now, making big bucks freelancing for NASA sounds pretty cool, but it's only really an option for people with scientific training, right? How much real-world difference can us non-scientists actually make? You might be surprised. In October 2017, residents of the quiet English town of Hazelmere took part in an experiment filmed by the BBC, studying how contagious diseases spread. Participants downloaded a contact tracing app, then went about their normal lives. But over the next three days, whenever two people came into close proximity, a Bluetooth connection between their phones registered a potential infection, allowing scientists to track the spread of an imaginary disease through a real population. Back then, this probably seemed like an entertaining, yet purely hypothetical exercise. But three years on, the resulting data was put to very real use by epidemiologists fighting COVID-19, a powerful demonstration of the real impact crowdsourced science can have. Sadly, though, the COVID pandemic also illustrates the dangers that can come with declaring science is something anyone can do. During the dark days of lockdown, many turned to crowdsourced pseudoscience, rejecting the advice of experts with deadly consequences. Ironically, this lack of trust in science is partly a result of its many recent successes, each the product of incredibly specialized research, the details of which are hard for most of us to grasp. But this widening gap between specialist knowledge and everyday understanding is a problem because it feeds a creeping suspicion that science is something we just have to take on trust, a problem that only gets worse when the danger we're being warned of is too small or too big to see with our own eyes. But maybe crowdsourced science could help solve this problem too. 
There are any number of reasons to engage with crowdsource projects. For a fun and interesting distraction, to help protect the natural world, be a part of the search for extraterrestrial life, or just to bolster your resume and earn some cash. But more broadly, by making society part of the scientific process, crowdsource science could give people a more meaningful sense of the questions researchers are trying to answer and the problems they're trying to solve. Helping bridge the divide between science as a remote academic exercise and the concerns of our day-to-day -day lives.